Hey guys, it's Spikers from Spikers RC, and I figure I'm going to do a quick tutorial on um, filling shocks with oil. Um, I get this question asked a lot to me. Um, I'm not even all that great at it, but I'm going to show you what works for me. I've already skipped ahead a little bit here. I'm actually uh, filling up some uh, shocks from my Wraith, and um, I figure I'll just kind of go over things with you as I've done them so far. Um, one of the best things I can do is give everything a little bit of a, a clean out inside as best you can. Don't go crazy. Um, don't use any harsh chemicals or whatnot because there is some rubber seals in the bottom of these. Um, if you want to, you can use uh, soap and water, but make sure before you do that you pull the bottom of the shocks apart so that all the, the, uh, the gaskets in the bottom are out when you're trying to clean the body. Uh, but that works as well. Um, one I'm going to go through here is uh, some of, the, and I'm sorry guys, I know I say I'm a lot, bear with me, I'm trying to stop that. What I'm going to show you here is, is with these shocks, how to fill these with oil, a lot of people are telling me that they fill them up and they can't compress the shocks anymore, or they're feeling really, sp or too spongy, I guess. And this is what I do. I have pretty good luck with it. It might not be the proper way, it may not be the best way, but it's what I do. What I do is I always start with the shock uh, fully extended, and I fill the shock cavity here, like the tube, probably about three quarters of the way full, and I just I work the shaft up and down slowly. And what that does is it allows any air bubble that's trapped in the, uh, or behind the plunger in here, uh, the chance to get past it and come to the top because you really don't want air in the shock. It's a bad thing. It makes them act a little weird. They, they get a little too spongy and soft and you, you don't get a constant compression rate with them that way. So fill it up three quarters of the way or so and work the shaft up and down a little bit and rotating it every, with every movement of it as well. That way the holes move around inside the tube there and allow the air to come up. Once you've done that, I recommend sitting them up vertical like this. Uh, before I had an actual pit stand, I used shot glasses. And I just stood these up inside shot glasses and it just, just keeps them upright because you want to let them sit for a little while so that any air bubbles that are in the oil you know, rise up through and will eventually pop at the surface. It's a really important step to do. When, if you have access to a hobby store or whatnot, eBay, wherever, get one of these, they're a pit stand. Uh, this one's called Duratrax, you can kind of see the name here. Uh, it's actually pretty good. It, it's got two rubber strips here to kind of help with keeping your RC on it. I like it. It's got the four holes for uh, holding shocks upright. As well, it's also got, at the front and the back here, uh, two little trays to put screws and stuff in there. Right now in the back here, I'm using it to hold the springs and stuff and the shock caps. So, uh, back to the shocks though. Once they've sat for a while and you're sure that there isn't any more air bubbles in there, um, I'm using the Axial included 30 weight uh, oil. You can get all sorts of oil, all different weights. The heavier the weight, the longer it's going to take for the air bubbles to rise up to the top. If you have the time, I say minimum hour, just let it sit like this. I like to actually leave it overnight. Uh, that way I know all the air is out, especially with the heavier oils. I left this overnight, I didn't need to, it was just whatever, but 30 weight, it doesn't take that long. Uh, next step is to fill them up a little more not quite full but close and what you're going to do then is take your shock cap and put it on but only turn it a little bit you just want it to catch and start to hold on right um, you're still going to have some movement in it and you got to remember these shock caps don't have much of a diaphragm in the top they're not like tracks where they've got the concave little rubber seal at least not in my experience with these anyway. And I just want it on there a little bit. Like not a whole lot, just enough that it's 
it, it it's holding on. Uh, once that's like that, I'll raise the shock to full compression and then quickly tighten it down. And take some paper towel and just wipe away any excess that comes around the threads. And these things you don't really need to go crazy tight, but I go as tight as I can with my hands. And that way you now have a shock that compresses full stroke. Uh, what you have to remember, a lot of people what they do is they'll fill up the shock body all the way to the top, you know, and you even get the little bit of a, that meniscus um, concave or convex, whatever it is, bit where it, the oil is actually kind of over full, and a lot of people do that and then screw the cap down thinking that way they've got all the air out. Um, that's not a good idea because you got to remember as you compress this, the shaft actually will displace oil inside of the shock body. And if there's nowhere for that oil to go, then the shock can't compress. Because you got to remember, you can't compress oil or water, right? So if you can't compress it, then it can't go in. And that's one of the things. So if you are doing this and you find that you can't push, like you're, you're shoving this in, don't go too hard, but you're trying to shove it in there and it won't go in, you're trying to you got too much oil in the shock body, you need to take some out. Okay. Um, I'm just going to top up the rest of these real quick here. Dun, dun, dun. And if I'm smart at this point, I'll have figured out how to speed up this. Full compression and screw it down. And see, here's the thing, as I start screwing it down and it's pushing the shock out. It's not such a good thing. See? See, you kinda wanna keep it compressed while you're screwing the cap down. Okay. So it's screwed down. Just wipe the excess oil off the threads, because I mean that's going to attract dirt and stuff when you're out on the trails. It's going to stick to it. You don't want that. Ain't nobody got time for that. And there's another shock. Now, I'm granted I'm not that good at doing these, um, so my compression rate in all four are never quite right, but you get the picture. It's good enough for me, it's good enough for 90% of the people out there running these things. So, again, we just, just so it's catching it, go full compression to displace any extra oil. Hold it there, screw the cap down. It's going to force some of the silicone oil out through the threads. You take your cloth, wipe off the excess, just like that. And again. You're good. Do this again. Cap. It's just on there. Compress the shock. This also makes sure that there's no air in it. Screw it down, keeping pressure on the shock piston here so that it doesn't get pushed out. And that way you know you've got the right amount of oil in the shock body. There we go. And then, from here, all it is is a matter of putting on shock spring and the bottom cup holder thing. I don't know what to call that. What do you call it? If somebody knows what they call this little piece at the bottom, please write it in the comments. Alright, and then you can adjust your tensioner. Do the same thing with this one. And there you have it guys. Four completed shocks ready to go and back on your trucks. Okay. Excellent. Anyway, again, my name is Spikers. I'm from Spikers RC. 
Please, if you found this helpful, please share it, like it, subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends, come back and check for option or for updates regularly, and I hope you enjoyed it. Keep the rubber side down. Have a great time, guys. Cheers.